Mono railroading takes quite a few different skills. Let's talk about some ones that you should really learn to become a better model railroader on coffee and trains. Welcome everybody to another edition of Coffee and Trains. Before we begin, I am drinking Tim Hortons, you guys. I ordered some, and this time I'm actually taking it black. I want the first cup to be black. So as I said, there are some skills that you can invest some time in learning for model railroading that will make you better at model railroading. And we're gonna jump right in with the first one, which is carpentry. Carpentry is a skill that can help you go from that folding table loop that you may have now all the way up to a custom model railroad empire. Now you don't need to be some expert craftsman that's doing all these amazing things with all these different types of wood. You just need to have a basic understanding of how to build some framing and a simple table out of some pine boards. Um, I would learn how to do some sort of support system like L girder bench work is a really popular one. Um, and most of the time you're just going to be using inexpensive wood so you don't need a ton of tools and you're not going to be doing a bunch of complicated cuts either. Uh, most of the time I'm using a drill with a bit set, a circular saw, a screwdriver set, a tape measure, a speed square, a hammer, and some quick clamps. Occasionally I will whip out the jigsaw for some more custom cuts, but those are most of the tools that I use. I don't have a table saw. I don't have anything crazy like that. If you're building really large stuff, you may want to consider that, but I'm able to get away with those tools for about 90% of my carpentry. And getting a basic understanding of how to build like a simple table and framework and learning how to do things like L girder bench work um, is going to open up a lot of design possibilities for your model railroad. The second skill would be to learn a basic understanding of electrical work. I'm not saying you have to become an electrician, but our hobby is powered almost exclusively by electricity. There's obviously live steam and clockwork powered locomotives, but you just need to have a basic understanding so that you can know how electricity flows and the way that you should connect things. You need to understand terms like volts, amps, and ohms, and what they mean. That's going to help you out a lot as well, and that's just a simple Google, and you can remember that. Uh, learn the requirements and intolerances of your equipment so that you don't fry a circuit board unintentionally. I know I fried um, a couple decoders in my day not understanding everything that I needed to do with them. So take the time to learn and understand basic schematic symbols as well. Now, I'm not great at this. I'm not the person you want to ask to read a complex electrical schematic of a circuit board or anything like that but I do know enough to read a basic schematic and understand kind of what the flow is also learn how to solder solder is one of the biggest things that can help you grow your model railroad because there is a lot of custom wiring if you really get into the weeds of model railroading and remember you don't have to be perfect you don't have to have those beautiful beads I certainly don't but it's going to help you with wiring and it's going to save may even save you from a costly repair or having to throw some Thing away simply being able to do a solder fix on it. The last skill I'm going to talk about is a pretty big one and that is paint. Paint is literally everywhere in model railroading. We're talking about backdrops, buildings, scenery, custom locomotives and rolling stock, detail work. It is literally everywhere. It is a staple model railroad supply. Now the first thing you need to learn is some of the basic types of paint. Now I use three main types on my layout. There are more than three but these are the three main ones that I use. Acrylic, enamel, and latex and you need to learn the differences between those now first of all some of you guys say well you also use spray paint spray paint can actually be multiple types of paint it's just been aerosolized and pressurized in a can the first one is latex paint which you many of you may already know that is common household paint usually used on walls and things like that uh, a lot of the brown base coat, or actually all the brown base coat on my layout is latex household paint. And you can buy it by the gallon and it's pretty cheap for that. And you don't have to buy the nicest one. You can go in there and buy the least expensive latex paint to use here because you're not painting a wall. You're just doing the base coat right here. The second one is acrylic. Acrylic is kind of the dynamic do-all paint. You can do just about anything with it on a model railroad. I use it for painting buildings. Um, I do all sorts of stuff with it. It is my go-to paint. It is inexpensive and it is, there are tons of colors available. So, and the third and last one is enamels. Enamels are like the little testers paint bottles, um, if you've ever gotten those. 
Um, those are really good for your plastic models and doing some plastic uh, detail work, at least in terms of the enamel paints that you'll be buying to do work on your model railroad. Now, with paint, it's not just learning what the paints are, it's learning how to use them. So that means you need to learn some brush types and do some practice with different types of brushes so that you can learn which one works best for you. For me, I love a very flat, stiff bristle brush and I also love foam brushes and I know when I need to use which one. So learn which brush type works best for you and when to use them. And speaking of brushes, you should also consider learning airbrushing. Airbrushing is something that can be intimidating and it does take some practice, but it can get a really smooth coat and it gives a unique finish that is very hard to get with a brush. And for instance, I just airbrushed my track recently, made it take not anywhere near as long. I've airbrushed buildings and all sorts of things. Airbrushing is also great for weathering. You can get a very natural look for your weathering when you're weathering buildings or cars or things like that. So that's painting. If you want any more information or to see when I've done stuff with these three different skills, I'm gonna have some links to some videos at the end of this video. Right now, we're gonna talk about your coffees that you guys have been drinking. Uh, first up is Gray and Granger says that he is drinking a dark roast no sugar store brand K-Cup. Can't go wrong with those store brands. Next up is the Mill Run and Western Railway. Says he is drinking his usual Dunkin' Donuts with French vanilla creamer. I do love me some Dunkin' Donuts. And last but not least, uh, look for, the Lord, for the love of loot, if I can say that. Says he just bought a bag of counterculture gradient to drink every morning for the next week. So if you guys have any skills or tips that you think are crucial to model railroading, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to tell me what coffees you guys are drinking as well. I wanna say a big thank you to all of you. And I also wanna say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They're listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. I got a lot of cool things going on there that you can go over there and check out. Now, if you're looking to learn some more stuff about the topics we've talked about right here, I have a link to a playlist with some videos that I've done some carpentry work in right here. I have a link to a playlist for some electrical work that I've done right here. And last but not least, I have a link to a playlist with some videos where I've done some paint right here. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.